Let's see if my Wi-Fi is gonna work up in my office. I was just sitting looking out this beautiful window and I saw butterflies and the leaf, just this beautiful big leaf just fell and I just like sat here and I was like, so yummy to just sit and arrive in the moment. So I came on today to talk about podcasting and to answer questions and also maybe to share to open the lens, to widen the aperture, and just share a little bit of my experience in case it might really inspire you. And so if you have questions about podcasting, you can put them in the chat. You can also, there's like a question feature. You can put it there and then I can put it on the screen. Um, so I wanted to share a little bit with you. Okay, I just wanna share one thought and then we'll sort of dive into it because it's so incredible that we have this tool where you can be in your house in your pajamas or a sweatshirt like I am right now and have great conversations with people and make millions of dollars. Like, just think that thought for a second. Just think that thought. Like, hmm, what if that was true. Like what if God sent you an email and said, you could have great conversations with people and be home when you want and be with your kids when you want and live life on your terms and make millions of dollars. If that was true, wouldn't everybody do that? Or a lot of people consider it, right? Not everybody that likes talking to people, but for those of us who do, especially those of us who are seekers and people, persons, right? So I want to say a couple things about podcasting. One thing I want to say is just a commentary on the world and why I think podcasting is so juicy and why I think it works. I think that we live in a time where it's so obvious that we have more than a deficit that the government, you know, I don't know, they throw out these words. We have a deficit in the government. But more than any other kind of deficit, I think we have a empathy deficit. I think that the studies are showing that people feel lonelier than ever and we all are connecting all day long, right? We're on our phones, we're being social on social media and yet why is the loneliness so high? Because we're not having deep conversations. We're having these short truncated text conversations or we're just reading comments. We're not like communicating anymore. It used to be that if you wanted to connect at all with someone, you had to go to their house or call them on the phone. Remember the phones before there was even like call waiting? Like I remember when call waiting came out and it was like, oh my gosh, I can get another line. Like, so we used to give each other a lot more attention. And then the conversations were a lot more fulfilling because we didn't speak in texts and like emojis. We listened, we made space for each other. So if you really just step back and look at the landscape of the world, one of the places where these deeper conversations are happening is in podcasting. People are so deprived of deep dive, intimate conversations in their life that they feel at least they can listen to long form conversation. We've lost the art of really making space for each other. So podcasting serves such a need and what happens is your audience develops a feeling of that intimacy with you because when you podcast you show up and by the way just to throw in a few specifics here there's something in the industry called pod fade which is most people who start a podcast record seven episodes and then don't touch it again so pod fade is this feeling where someone's like, I'm going to do seven episodes. And then somehow by seven, if they don't hit a number or hit some kind of goal, they just give up. So when people do decide they're just doing this, they're not going to give it seven episodes. They're just going to do this as a fait accompli. They're showing up consistently for these regular conversations. And what happens is your audience develops an audio habit where they take you to work with them every day. They listen to you at the gym and they feel intimate with you. They start to get to know you because you know it's one thing to create a reel and you can edit it and you can put a filter on it, 
But it's very hard to filter and edit yourself when you are podcasting because you're showing up for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour. My shows are an hour. So if somebody's been listening to my show for two episodes, nine episodes, we've done 600 plus episodes. But if you've been listening, you know who the hell I am because I can't really, I can't BS you. Like you're, you're there, you know, you're listening. It's a long form piece of content, which is so juicy, especially if you're willing to be genuine, right? If you have the courage to be genuine, then it's life-giving and it's everything. So podcasting is such an incredible gift. And, you know, I was talking to someone recently and she said, well, I'm doing this thing and I, I feel like I'm doing a good job convincing people that they need to, you know, do this with their life. But I don't think people need convincing. I think what we need in our life is for each of us to be like a personal hotspot for each other, to be a Wi-Fi router for you, for each other. What does that mean? It means when I've literally allowed into my vortex, my world, my reality, when I'm walking in, standing in a reality that's so palpable and so embodied, you start to see through a wider lens. And so when I hopped on here earlier, I said, I want to talk about podcasting because maybe it'll open the aperture for you. And by me sharing what has been my experience and is my experience, I think it's powerful for you to start to see what is a potential possibility for you because it's evident in my life. And so in my life, before I started a podcast, I used to think that in order to make money. At the time I was a songwriter. So I already felt like I had beat the system because I was making a few hundred thousand dollars a year before a podcast came along. I was making that kind of money writing songs that I would license to TV shows like Grey's Anatomy and Switched at Birth and Younger and things like that. But even with that, it got to a point where I felt like this is a little bit exhausting in the sense of every time I make a dollar, What has to come first is I have to be inspired and create something and go to the studio and and make a thing. And I have two kids. At the time I had two kids and I was like, it'd be really cool if now that it, it had been 10 years of doing that, I was like, wouldn't it be cool if there was yet another way where I could find a stream of abundance without having to make a beautiful big widget called a song that was, you know, because it's, It's one thing to write music, but I would say for every 40 songs I wrote, I wrote a great song. And that's part of the creative process. You know, I heard that Diane Warren writes a song every single day and we know so many of her hits, like Because You Love Me and so many of those songs, but she's writing one every day and then she's like, ooh, but this one, this is a hit, right? So I had this thought about podcasting and I did think to myself, well, you know, Joe Rogan is podcasting and there's evidence of... At the, t- at the time, there were already hundreds of thousands of people who were podcasting, and that was their platform. And if thoughts become things, why not decide, that's it. That's my, that's my reality. That's the potential I'm selecting off the shelf in this infinite field, that I will do a podcast, I will call people forward, and I will have this connection, and I will have this conversation, and I'll get paid to just have this conversation. Why not decide that? Because that exists that exists, that is a thing. Like when we're growing up, sometimes we're like, oh, you could be a doctor, a vet, a firefighter. But now very much a reality, at least my kids will say, this is funny. They'll say things like, when I grow up, I'm not gonna have a job, I'm just gonna have a podcast because podcasts how you make millions of dollars because that's the model they see in my house. And what I love about that, if you catch what they phrased it as, is like, I'm not going to have a job and have a podcast. Not only do they see me making millions of dollars, they see me having so much fun that it looks as to them, I don't have a job. Like their parents of their friends who they see, they go to work and this one does HR and this one is an attorney and this one comes home really late. And and then they see us being able to fly first class and they go, but mommy doesn't have a job. She hosts a podcast and thank God, because what if on the shelf of what is possible is a reality called something that doesn't feel like a job because it's your, it's, it's what's lighting your soul up. You feel like you're nourished by it. I mean, I have conversations like today's conversation on the podcast with Rupert Spira 
was life changing for me. And I get paid to have that conversation. And it's amazing. And people will say, well, how do you get paid? So we have over 200 sponsors of my podcast, you know, and it used to be that people would watch television and in the middle of watching your friends or Seinfeld, there'd be an ad for Crest toothpaste. That stopped, you guys. That stopped. Why did that stop? Because people were DVRing their shows. Then people started just paying for a subscription to Netflix and there were no ads. So where do you think the advertisers started to go? They started to go where people would actually buy the product. Well, they could no longer do that on TV. So they started doing it elsewhere. And in the last five years, they started spending billions in advertising, in podcasting, because what they found was the ROI was so much higher, even if the person was not famous, because the intimacy of those listening was so high that people would be engaged and they would buy the product. So podcasters started to get paid, even if they had a small audience, because they had a captive audience. And so what started happening in podcasting was actually different than what was happening on YouTube because people weren't making as much money with YouTube ads, but with podcasting ads, it started to go through the roof because of the engagement. And so one of the things that sometimes people think is that in order to make money with any business, whether you have a floral shop or you do yoga classes or you have a podcast, people think you need an audience of 50,000, 100,000. What it turns out is for the advertiser, you need engagement. So if you see someone who has 500,000 followers on their Instagram, but they only have 300 likes on their last post, they don't have an engaged account. That is a very low percentage of people who are actually interacting with their content. But if you see somebody who has 10,000 followers and they have a thousand likes on their post, they have a really high percentage of engagement, which means they are gonna have a brand really wanna work with them. So when it comes to podcasting, what's also great about it, it's not about width, it's about depth. It's not about how many listeners you have. It's about how much intimacy you have with your listeners. And so for me, my husband always says, it was like the perfect thing at the right time because 50 years ago, there weren't podcasts. And he's like, you're really so meant and suited for podcasts because you create intimacy with the Uber driver. You create intimacy with the waitress. You create intimacy with the parents of our kids, you know, classmates in five seconds. And that's just because I like people. I like people so much. I love people. I tend not to judge people. I tend to feel like we're all in this together and I wanna just offer people a space and I want people to feel safe and at ease. And so I like talking to my guests, I like listening to my audience. So for me, it was the easiest thing. And then what happened was we got our first sponsor ever for our first episode, which was Blue Apron, first episode. I didn't have an Instagram account. I didn't have a audience. I didn't have a single subscriber and Blue Apron said, we wanna take a chance just to see, we're gonna do one one ad and see what the response is. And even though, even though the first episode, I didn't have yet even a single subscriber, those people who did happen to find it, they clicked on the Blue Apron thing because they said, oh, Kathy sounds like a girl I would have gone to like summer camp with, so I wanna click on this. So then they came back and made another ad and another ad. So now, We have so many ads that it's at a point where I get to be selective and say, I don't want to do that ad or you know what, I think there's too many ads in this episode, let's move that over. And then what happens is there's bigger bigger things that happen, right? I just signed a major podcast network deal. It's actually going to be in the trades. They just showed me the press release. It was a lot of money. Like, you know, I don't know if I'm allowed to reveal it, but it was a a lot of money. I could buy a house with the amount, I could buy a house in LA with the amount of money that they gave me. And they don't own my IP, they don't own my podcast, they just have the right to sell ads for my podcast. And guess who makes the money on the ads? I keep 75% of the ad money and they keep 25% of it. And they gave me this money upfront to be on their network because here's the other thing they found out. I actually asked them, why are you giving me such a big deal? I'm so excited about it, but I'm curious, what is it about me? And they said, well, a big part of it is this intimacy and and 
they are looking for shows that are run by women because the data shows in the behavior of buyers that most of the buyers, most of the purchases are made by women. So what they're seeing is that podcast hosts that are male don't actually do as well with the advertisers, even if they have a giant audience, those men are not necessarily clicking on the organic vitamins or buying a Casper mattress, but women do. Women actually like to spend money and we like to support people. And so it's like a very nice symbiotic thing. So he said, you have very high engagement and your audience is 91% female. So we knew that was like triple A plus. So that's why we invested in your show. And they said, that's why we're looking for more women led shows. So I really want you to hear what I'm saying because every single day I see people really feeling like exhausted by the idea of like, making a living doing something they love feels very out of reach making millions of dollars seems like what in the world would i have to do to sell my soul to make that happen so forget it when i'm sitting here right now in the middle of the day in a sweatshirt telling you that my life is millions of dollars from getting to do exactly what i'm doing right now today sitting here talking to you and so This is why I'm doing a podcast course. In fact, I'm at a place where I'm really, 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 really so turned on by doing things that turn me on that I have like a queasy feeling in my stomach if I do something that doesn't turn me on. And so right now I am working on this beautiful show, which is in development, which I can't wait for it to be out because I think you guys are going to love it. It's going to be like your favorite TV show to watch. And I love this podcast so much and I've been doing events and I'm doing an event at the end of October at UCLA with Andy Grammer and Rachel Platten and Amy Purdy and it's going to be so much fun. And all of that, by the way, is a result of my podcast. All of those people are coming to my event because they listen to my podcast because they became fans of mine because of my podcast. It's so amazing how I now sit at tables with people who I admire, who I've known from movies or from books or from fashion or from design who say, oh my gosh, I love your podcast. And I'm like, how did I get into this room through just sitting in my closet in my pajamas? Like it's unbelievable that this is offered. And that's why I'm saying, I feel so strongly about this that I said to Colleen who runs my team, I'm like, I wanna run the podcast course again because we did it at the beginning of last fall a year ago and I wanna run it again. So we're running it again. It starts the week of September 26th. Right now it's on pre-sale till tomorrow, which means whether you buy the gold package or the platinum package, you get a savings. And if you're an alumni, you get an extra savings if you DM me for the alumni code, but you get a savings to sign up for my podcast course if you sign up by tomorrow night. And you can join by going to kathyheller.com slash join. And right now it's on pre-sale, flash sale. And if you don't join by tomorrow and you want to join and take this class that starts September 26th that week, it'll just be more expensive when you go to join it after tomorrow night. So I wanted to let you know about the sale. It is worth every penny because the investment in this program is going to get you to invest in actually doing the work. And the investment in this program is a then ticket to you knowing how to do something that has the potential to do what it's done for me and actually all of my friends. Like I get mad now at my friends when they don't have a podcast. I'm like, you're literally just sitting on gold that you're not cashing in. Like have a podcast, start a podcast. Uh, My friend Danielle Silverstein is somebody who I encourage to start a podcast. And she was like, you know, I listened to you, Kath. And I was like, screw it. I'm just going to do this. And at the time, I didn't know her. She's become my friend. She was just a listener of my podcast. And she's like, her marriage was falling apart. She didn't know where to turn. They were thinking about ending their marriage. This was all public. This was like part of their first episode. And she said every podcast on marriage made them feel worse. It was like, here's all the things that are perfect that we're not doing and all of this stuff. And then she heard me say like, this is all the things that are possible. And She thought, why don't I just start a podcast anyway? And let me just be honest and brave and we can have real conversations, her husband and her, about what was really going on in their marriage. And lo and behold, their marriage grew because they were being honest. They had these real conversations. Sometimes they would actually like argue on the mic, but they got through it. And the reason she said that it saved their marriage is because by not having prescription advice for marriages and just being honest, 
thousands of people eventually shared it with thousands of people who wrote in and said, this is the only genuine thing I've heard in years. And I love that you're doing this because my husband and I've been married for eight years or 11 years and we never have sex or we're always arguing, or we have this infidelity issue we haven't talked about, or we have this cheating uh, on like the money stuff, like forget infidelity in the, the sex part. We have it with like addiction with money or gambling. What wound up happening is she said, she and her husband didn't feel alone anymore because other people said that they were going through such similar things, which then made her feel better about the situation. And then they started to figure out a way to work through it, which they knew was going to be helpful to their whole community. And then they started getting advertisers. Then they were in the New York Post. Then they had all of this attention. Then they wound up making an ebook, which, which was just the questions that they ask each other to have real conversations. And it wound up making six figures, just the ebook. Like it's, it's crazy town. And not really, because if you understand the way humanity works, we connect through intimacy. So that's why having a podcast isn't magic. It's it's the magic of humans, right? Like on the other end of anything that anyone ever sold was a person, right? It's a human. And so when you have intimacy as your product, it's amazing how that just moves your whole empire forward. So I feel like I started this conversation by saying we live in a time where there's such an empathy deficit and by you being real and genuine and not having to have all the answers and not being a look at me person, but a come with me person, you stand out from the noise. And I'm going to tell you that like people who have much bigger platforms than me have started podcasts and they have a lot less, you know, of an engaged audience because you don't need to have a best-selling book to have a podcast. You don't need to be cool and perfect and have the best boobs and the best hair. You you need to be the most genuine. You need to have the most sticky glue Velcro when it comes to humans. Like, who do you want to go to lunch with? Your friend who's like, let me tell you how perfect I am, how perfect my kids are. My husband and I never fight and we're amazing. Like, you would say, gag me with a spoon and I don't want to sit here. It's just like it's exhausting, right? Because it's not real. But if somebody's like, here's what's up with me. You know, it seems to me like, you know, I might be crushing it at work, but somehow I'm crushing it at work. And then my marriage is feeling like it's hard or whatever it is you feel like, oh, I can be, then I can be honest with this person because this person is letting their guard down. So there's no sort of like precursor to having a podcast. You don't need to be brilliant. You don't need to be a straight A student. You need to be a friend. Like my favorite role in life is being someone's friend. And so I used to think when I would do an episode, like I'm not on the hook to be the smartest person in the room. I'm on the hook to be the most empathetic, the most cool, the most relatable, and it works. And we often then say to ourselves, well, then how the hell is anyone going to find out about it? Like people will say, I would start a podcast, but I don't have an audience. Like I didn't either. If you go do your research and you scroll all the way back through my Instagram, you'll find out I started a podcast before I had a social media platform at all. I started a podcast before I had a book, before I had any notoriety. So how does that work? It works the way everything works. If you go to an Italian restaurant and they have the best meatballs, you're going to tell five people that you just can't stop thinking about it. You are like that and you don't realize it. This is why Malcolm Gladwell wrote a book called Tipping Point. This is what Seth Godin has to say about the Grateful Dead who were never on the radio, never. The reason people know them is because of word of mouth. So we don't realize that that is actually how things become so big. Even when things are are given a lot of momentum and a lot of publicity. Have you ever seen how many times you'll see NBC get behind a show and they put billboards up everywhere and they pick the prettiest actors and then like nobody cares. And then there's shows like The Office, which the network doesn't know if they're gonna renew and nobody's sure about it. And next thing you know, The Office currently, which is not on the air, like The Office, right? It's not on the air right now. It's the most watched piece of content in the world across all platforms because people can't stop talking about it. And they're not talking about it because the prettiest people are on the show. They're talking about it because there's something about the show that makes them feel seen because those people are just like them. And it's funny and it has sweetness and it has depth and it's, it's great. It's got all the things and it just got talked about a lot. That's how it works. So when you just show up and you pour yourself into one person, if one person is listening, then that one person 
feels something and says, I'm going to send this to my sister. I'm going to send this to my mother. I'm going to send this to my friend. And next thing you know, you get six DMs like my friend from college told me about your show. And you're like, great. And that's how it goes. And so when we are thinking about the rest of this year, right? When you're thinking about next year and you're like, what could be the most sensational thing I can do to grow my business? Whatever your business is, if you blow glass, if you teach organizing, if you're a stylist, if you are a coach, the best thing you're going to do for that business is to create intimacy, is to create buyers, is to create buyers, is to create intimacy, right? Mercedes Benz doesn't just rely on putting out like an ad in a newspaper. They know that you're going to walk into the shop and they're gonna tell their sales team to have as many test drives as possible because the intimacy that happens when somebody feels the connection, they're likely to then say, this experience makes me wanna buy a car. So when somebody has an experience with you, and let's say you're a florist and there are 15 other floral people available on Yelp, and let's say you have a podcast and your podcast is about all things like event planning and what makes you actually enjoy the event that you planned because so often people plan these beautiful events but then they don't actually enjoy them because they're stressed the whole time so you have all things on your podcast from you know culinary art stuff to photographers to also psychologists talking about being in the moment like let's say that was your thing and let's say i live in your town and all these people are on yelp but you're the one i can listen to i can experience you i can come to know that i like you and i trust you why would i not then want to buy from you, right? Because I have a connection to you. If you think about why people who have that connection can sell anything, like think about somebody who you know and love, you already know and love them. So therefore you just want to support, you want to go to their event, you want to buy the t-shirts they make. You, It's all about the connection. It's that EQ. So there is just too much goodness in podcasting for me to not teach a podcast course once in a while. And I taught it a year ago, it was a year ago. And I don't know if with the development of this TV show, if I'll be able to teach it again, but maybe down the road, I could at least just, I can give you guys the, you know, the pre-recorded stuff. But this time around, I'm gonna be teaching it to you. So if you sign up for the podcast course that I'm running now, we're gonna be on Zoom together and I'm gonna be breaking it down into steps. Like this is how you, get people on your podcast. This is how you get on other people's podcasts. Okay, now you have an assignment to make a trailer. Now I'm gonna teach you how to get reviews for your podcast. Now I'm gonna teach you how to create the kind of interviews where you ask the kind of questions that people answer in a way they don't answer on everybody else's show. So we'll talk about that. Now we're gonna talk about monetizing. So we're gonna talk about monetizing with sponsors. We're gonna talk about monetizing with bigger brand engagement platforms. Like maybe you don't just offer that you can do a sponsored post, but you also do some interactive thing with the brand because you go and lead a workshop or you speak at there, you do a speaking event there. Then there's also things that you're gonna sell directly to your listeners, whether it's gonna be merch, or whether it's gonna be an event, or whether it's gonna be a live podcast tour, or whether it's going to be your services themselves because you're actually a dog walker, so you have a podcast about dog behavior, but then you also let everybody know at the end of every episode that if they live in whatever, you offer this dog collar they can buy at this site, or you offer these services. Like Podcasting is a gold mine for building your business. And so we're gonna talk about what are the steps that people just need in order to be able to pay you, in order to be able to work with you, and what are the ways that you build the trust, you build the intimacy, and then how do you leverage that to solve the problems, to show up for people? Because here's the thing, by the end of the day, let's say you make jackets. Well, by the end of the day, somebody who's looking for a jacket, they're gonna buy a jacket anyway. So someone who's looking for jackets may as well buy a jacket from you, right? If somebody is looking for a photographer and you are one, by the end of the day, the person looking for a photographer, they're gonna hire some photographer. So they may as well hire you, right? If you are a coach, if you are a um, Pilates teacher, like at the end of the day, 
there are already people, you didn't make this happen, it's already done. There's already people out there looking for coaches. There are people out there looking for Pilates teacher. There's already people out there looking for a sweatshirt. There's already people out there looking for a cute gift to get for their girlfriend's engagement party. That's already done. That part's done. The client is there. The customer's there. The buyer is there. That's already done. That's just called the market. That's just called life. Every second, somebody's looking for pillows. Somebody's looking for an event space. Somebody's looking for a teacher or a piano. All day, every day, every second. So if you do one of those things and you want to start a business, you may as well raise your hand because they may as well buy it from you. They may as well come to you to teach them voice. They may as well come to you to help them with their financial planning or their HR or consulting on their resume or whatever it is because they're doing it anyway. They're going to spend the money anyway. So you may as well grow your business. And the best way to grow that business is to create the emotional intimacy through having a podcast because then you don't go right to a sale. You're not trying to go to a cold audience. You're not trying to look everywhere and go, I have no leads. You're creating leads by having listeners who you invest in, who you deposit in, who you make that emotional connection with. And then a natural thing is that they're going to want to know what up, what's up with you. What do you sell? What do you do? They just want it. So we now have a podcast, this little girl right here who got basically a C average in high school, started a podcast five years ago. We now have almost 40 million downloads. The show makes multiple millions of dollars, not to mention all the fun things that come from it. The events I get to do, the way that this, I just got a second book deal with Simon Schuster. That book is amazing and it's coming out next fall. Oh, and by the way, the book wrote itself because I had so many podcasts that my editor was able to go in transcribe my podcast and then say to me, you actually have six books. Which of these books do you want to, do you want to put out? Cause you've written through the transcripts. That's how, by the way, that's how people write books today. Marianne Williamson was on my show. She's like, I was at a talk and a guy came up to me and said, I've been recording it on this cassette. This is a book. It's called return to love. I'm going to write it out for you and transcribe it. And she sent that to her publisher. And that was the book that broke the mold. That's her best selling book. It was her talks written and she's like great she said that to me when she was on my show so your podcast is your books your podcast is your fortune your podcast just who do who do podcast sponsors and networks want right now i'm going to tell you the truth they want women podcasters who are middle-aged who are normal who are just you just doing your thing that's exactly who's the buyer and that's exactly the person they want as the host so if this is you that's why I'm taking the time to come on here today to say, I have a podcast course that is not just you watching videos. It's a connection. It's a Zoom call. It's a breaking down how you build the podcast, how you monetize the podcast. And it's on pre-sale till tomorrow night. I will come back again so you don't miss it in three weeks before we begin and we will be in our official launch mode, which I love launching. It's actually so much fun because it's just more giving. It's more teaching. It's more giving value. Like right now, all I'm doing is handing you nuggets of value that I've learned. So it's fun. I enjoy doing this. I don't have to sell you on a class. I just have to teach you and give you. And then you're like, of course I want to take class. So I love launching. And part of what we do, by the way, in the class is teach you how to launch to your podcast audience, whatever you want to launch to them. If you want to launch a retreat, if you want to launch a product, if you want to, it's so fun. It's so fun. It's all the opposite of the used car salesman. It's about being a human and giving and being generous and having fun. So that's what we teach. And when I come back during launch mode, the class is going to be not on pre-sale. So if you want to save the money and join the class and you're going to join it anyway, sign up by tomorrow night, go to kathyheller.com slash join and sign up for the podcast program, which begins the week of September 25th. If you're an alumni of any of my programs, you get an extra special discount so you can DM me for the alumni code. If you're not an alumni, you still get a discount if you sign up before Friday night, tomorrow night, go to kathyheller.com slash join. The price is reduced until tomorrow night and then we'll come back in a few weeks and do our official launch. The price will be the regular price and it's worth, it's worth gazillions times that because look what it's done for me. I wish somebody would have said this to me 10 years ago, right? I started a podcast five years ago because somebody suggested I should. And then I figured everything out that I'm saying now 
on my way here to 40 million downloads, on my way here to multiple millions of dollars a year. I figured it out. I'm teaching it to you. But I wish that someone would have sat down and handed me this podcast course 10 years ago or 20 years ago because I would be doing podcasts. I would have done that immediately because it makes so much sense and there's no barrier to entry because it's so much fun. Okay, now I'm going to look at these questions. So... um I'm going to tap a question. I've never done this before. It says, everyone will watch it. We'll see it. But then will I be able to delete it? I don't know. So let me click on this. Oh, it worked. Thank you, Karen. So Karen's question is, what if you're more shy and not as great with talking to anyone like you are? So here, here's the thing, okay? When you're podcasting, again, what I love about it is, it's just you and the person. And so my husband's an introvert and he's amazing at his podcast. I'll give it a shout out. He's really good at it. He does a podcast with his friend, Mark Schiff. So their podcast is called You Don't Know Schiff. And actually my husband came up with that name. I think it's great. Um, He's great at podcasting because he's a great listener. And the thing, by the way, about wanting to feel good when you're talking to someone, whether you're an extrovert or an introvert, I'll teach you something. How do you think you become impressive in a conversation? What's the most impressive thing you can do, do you think, in a conversation? Do you think it's knowing a lot of things? Do you think it's talking quickly and talking smartly? I mean, what do you think is the answer? Well, the answer is through all the pieces of data that people have collected is that the best conversations people say they have exactly, exactly, and I'm gonna I'm gonna make that even stronger because you're you're saying in the comments you're saying the word listening which I think you're right on but I want to add to it the thing when people say to somebody gosh I just spoke with so and so that was like the best conversation it's not because that person was the most fascinating human being it's because the person they're saying they best had, had the best conversation with made them feel impressive made space for them listened to them. And so I actually think it's amazing if you think about coaches and therapists, they're usually not doing the talking, but they're really holding a beautiful amount of space. And so for me, I get really excited about podcasting and I don't do any prep. I'm going to say it again. The more prep I do, the more it takes me into this brain of, I have to make sure I hit all these points. I have to make sure I ask them about all these things. I have to be smart. I have to make them feel like I'm very knowledgeable about who they are. They don't want that. They want to feel that you're just so present and they have a safe space to be seen and heard. There's no human being in the world that doesn't want a safe space where someone's very loving and very present. And so whether you're introverted or extroverted, you can be extremely loving. We all have the same capacity to be really loving. And the only way we can be really loving is when we're not thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about the other person. We're not worried about performance. We're thinking about the other person. And that's how I run events as well. Like I was talking to my agent yesterday about this Royce Hall UCLA event. He's like, send me your itinerary of your program and your curriculum. I'm like, this is it. This is all I do. He's like, but what are we going to need to know about each act? And I'm like, this is it. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to show up on that stage. I'm going to love people and focus on what they are feeling. And the words are going to come. And they do because we're people persons. So I think that that's a great question. And I think it's important that we redefine. And I want to tell you something. Brian Grazer has a great book on conversations. Brian Grazer created Imagine Entertainment with Ron Howard. And when he was on my podcast, he said that the very first time he ever experienced this kind of feeling is when he was a temp. He was working at Warner Brothers Studio. He was 24. He was thinking of going to law school but later in the summer. He wasn't a big shot. He was nobody. He was just a kid doing a temp job. And somebody asked him to bring some papers to Warren Beatty to be signed. So he went to the Wilshire Boulevard Hotel and he knocked on the penthouse door and he just decided to be brave. And he said to Warren Beatty, you know, I know I'm here to drop off these papers, but you're my favorite actor. And at the time, Warren Beatty was like the biggest deal in Hollywood. This is 40 years ago. And he said, I would just love to know, like, what's one piece of advice you have 
of why you think you've become so successful. And he said, come in for a minute. And that minute turned into an hour and Brian sat there and listened for an hour as, as a total captive audience. And when he left, Warren Beatty said, thank you. This was such an enjoyable day for me. I loved, I loved spending this time with you. And, and, and Brian said, I realized how much people, even when they're that famous, they never run out of wanting someone to be a captive audience and really genuinely care about what they have to say. And so he decided that he could start a business just based on that. And so he started to go to lunches with people and say, tell me your story. And that's how he got the idea for Apollo 13. He's met with an astronaut. That's how he got the idea for Splash. That's how he got like, he's like, I would just listen to people and they would be so excited. And he goes, and then they would wanna do deals with me. They would wanna be in business with me. And I didn't do anything other than listen. So I hope that that helps, but that's a great question. Okay, let's see if I can pull up another question. Um, so I'm just going to pull these up and not filter them. So Katie said, I have a travel podcast. I do not own. I like it, but not my passion. Do you help us brainstorm new angles? Yes. I feel like one of my like party tricks is that I can help you brainstorm so many angles. And by the way, I think the reason I'm so good at brainstorming is because I'm not an overthinker. And I think that our most favorite place we're ever in as people is when we're in spontaneity because that's when you're in the flow, right? Like Will Ferrell is so funny because he never knows what he's about to say. And Tom Petty was such a great guitar player because he wasn't overthinking. He was just allowing himself to be one with the guitar. And in order to find the most yummy creative ideas, you have to be willing to just like start throwing spaghetti at the wall and it's so much fun and it's a muscle that you start writing down ideas and one way you can get really good at brainstorming angles for your show is by talking to somebody else and we do this in the class and you brainstorm angles for their show and then it becomes a muscle that you're familiar with and you're like oh my god i'm practicing this muscle and it's easier to do it for someone else because you're not as emotionally tied to resistance when you're talking about someone else's show next thing you know you have 15 ideas of the kind of show that you could start so i hope that that's helpful all right let's pull up another question um Okay, I'm going to read this one. So the question is, what do you think makes the difference between the podcast that skyrocket and the ones that stay uh, mostly undiscovered is what it says. So, you know, I think that this is so powerful. I think what we've been talking about is it. Like how many times, and by the way, this is the same thing with ads, right? We're all, we're all so well-versed on social media that we've seen so many sponsored posts, right? So what I say to people is, what makes you stop scrolling? The post where someone's like, perfect, it's like you're desensitized, you know? The thing that makes you stop scrolling is something that feels like it's part of your feed because it's real, right? So I think what happens with a lot of people is they just become part of the noise because there's nothing that feels vulnerable and genuine. But when something is genuine, people lean in. I'll give you an example, which is, really interesting you know i do a podcast which is about entrepreneurship and building a business and knowing that you can make money doing you making money being who you are that's what my show is about but because it's my show i wind up talking about what's going on in my marriage or i wind up talking about my kids or what whatever's going on that week and it's really interesting because a couple years ago I had been pregnant and the baby was sick with trisomy 18, which is very scary and very heavy. And I didn't find out until I was almost at my 20th week, which was just so awful, right? It was just no, nothing good about that. And I had to go through this horrible procedure and the, you know, I lost this pregnancy and I debated skipping over that week and um, not, not recording an intro because even when I've already pre-recorded an episode, I'll say, Hey, it's Kathy. Hope you had a great weekend. Today's episode is. And I thought I'm so broken right now. I can't say, Hey, it's Kathy. Hope you had a great weekend. Cause I didn't. So I was just going to not put out an episode. And then I said, I'm just going to record something and give myself the permission not to publish it after I record it. And let's just see what I wind up saying. I wound up talking for about 26 minutes and bawling my eyes out and telling the whole story. And then I said to my editor, 
um, who was my intern when I first met her. We were figuring it out together and then I wound up hiring her full time and look what we've done together. She's the same person. I've been with the same person, Emma Kikuchi, since my first episode. We've been together. It's almost six years and she was 23 when I met her. We both didn't know what we were doing and now we have a top 20 podcast. So there you go. But I said to her, you can put it, you can publish it and just upload it. And I say this because it was one of our most downloaded episodes. And I worried about putting it out because I thought people have been through worse and I didn't want to minimize what other people have been through. And then I thought, well, that's silly because just because I'm sharing something sad that happened doesn't mean I'm minimizing something sad that's happening to someone else. I'm just sharing something that happened. What wound up happening is people wrote in and said, your willingness to share your pain gave me a willingness to just feel the sadness I feel about X, Y, and Z. And I really am grateful that you shared it. And I realize how often we think we have to pick and choose what we share and how often people lean in more when we are just like them. And I think about it because so often I say that like, you know, the woman I think is the most sexiest woman. Sometimes I'll just say like, oh, I would want to look like Jennifer Aniston or like, I love her hair. I love her arms. I think about Jennifer Aniston and why she's different than Christy Brinkley or Giselle or something. And I think one of the reasons why she's so loved is because we've watched her go through breakups and we've watched her cry her eyes out. And we relate to this girl who's so beautiful and also just got, you know, her own deck of cards and there's nothing about it that's like, oh, it's the worst thing in the world or, oh, it's this, oh, but it's just like relatable on some level and it makes it more lovable. So I would say to people, stop making things so contrived. What people want is the stickiness, the realness, the, 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 the scars are where the light comes through. So instead of trying to be a look at me girl and sounding very saccharine and talking even differently, just talk like yourself, just be yourself just talk to people. I also think people lose sight of the empathy when they do that because it's really hard to worry about the pain point of your audience when you're trying to be impressive. So every time I've ever done a podcast episode, a fly just flew in here. That's great. Um, every time I ever do a podcast episode, I'm always thinking, what's the pain point of my listener? And I try not to shy away from that ever. And so what I mean is even though we're five years in and 40 million downloads in, I'm constantly engaging and asking questions about what's what's on people's hearts. And those are the questions that I ask when I'm interviewing someone. You know, I just interviewed Chelsea Clinton and I wasn't asking her the questions that, oh, this is what I want to ask her. I'm asking from the standpoint of in this moment, I am an ambassador on behalf of my audience. I'm an ambassador on behalf of the collective. So what question do they have? And I'll keep going back to it. And sometimes people are like, well, don't you run out of questions? And I'm like, no, because it's always the same questions, right? My audience is really always struggling with those same basic questions about getting over resistance in themselves and what's really possible and being liked. And so even if I feel like I've kind of figured some things out, A, I haven't, we're all dealing with the same things on just different days. And B, that's what my audience cares about. So that's what I care about. So those are some of those thoughts. Let's ask another question. Um, uh, so here's a question. I have so much indecision as to what to put in episodes to start off. So I think in general, the biggest thing that kills momentum and the biggest thing that kills the world in, in the moving forward is indecision. You know, indecision is a decision. It's a decision not to move forward. And what's crazy is that the momentum we get out of life is from making any decision. Like by making a decision, if the ROI is getting more of the answer key, then I'd rather put something up and start one way and then beta test it. You know, everything that's ever become a success has focus groups. It's in beta. People don't just put the 15,000 cans of Skippy peanut butter on the shelf. They ask 1,500 moms first. Do you want it crunchy? Do you want it chunky? Do you like the green logo? Do you like the yellow logo? So why are you all of a sudden supposed to be more brilliant than Starbucks and Google and Nike and you're supposed to know before you start? Clarity comes through the action of 
rowing it out there and testing it. Why is it that Netflix and Amazon dominate? Because they're constantly just looking for your feedback and trying to figure out what you like. So they then can just get you what you want. And we as business owners sometimes or as podcast creators think we're supposed to have those answers first. You're not. You're supposed to put episodes out, test them, see how they go. But what would keep you from doing that? Shame. It's a 20,000 ton thing that's disguised as perfectionism, but it's just shame of, I have to do it right. If I make a mistake, if, I, if the first seven episodes are not right and then I change the name, God forbid, of the podcast or I pivot and I start out talking about animals and then I start talking about marriage or just being a 30-year-old single girl, what will happen? Nothing. That's what will happen. Nothing. Like People want you to pivot. That's how they know you're listening. You're supposed to be in a process. It's not supposed to be a monologue. It's supposed to be a dialogue. We want that from leaders. Part of the reason you don't see people raising their hand to be leaders is because you think to be a leader, you have to be perfect. I mean, look at every leader we've ever had. Any leader we've ever had, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're looking at Biden or Trump or you're looking at JFK or Clinton or Nixon or Carter or any human being who's led a Girl Scout troop. Every person is figuring it out. So to be a leader is to be willing to be messy publicly. And boy, is that a gift because it releases you of shame. We're all messy. Do you think the people who listen to your podcast aren't figuring it out? So what gift do you give them by pivoting? What gift do you give them by trying something and then asking people for their feedback? This is why I had a successful songwriting business because my other songwriter friends would wait until they'd have this like what they thought was a perfect record and then they would send that to a studio. And I would instead ask the woman at Paramount or Netflix or ABC Family, which is now Freeform, I'd say, what do you guys need? Here's the beginning of a song. Is this even close to what you needed? And she'd be like, actually, we need it faster. Or actually, we want it more acoustic. Could you put acoustic drums in there? Next thing I know, I'm getting every single one of these jobs and they're buying songs from me. Why? Because I'm not trying to send them a finished product. I don't care about shame. I was never an A, an a student. I don't get over that. Test it, try it, forget the indecision. The indecision will be done when you have the answers. The answers come from testing anything. You've got to test it. Every single time you see a product at the store, just know they tested that in different markets so many times before they went through the hazard of spending so much money and wasting so much in the environment to put something out there that you weren't even going to like. You know what I'm trying to say? Okay. Hope that that was helpful. I'm a big fan. I could do a whole podcast just on indecision because I feel like I'm like whack-a-mole with that. Um, okay. Uh, so court, you had a question. You said, would the course be a fit for someone who desires a podcast, but doesn't have one yet? A hundred percent. This course that I am offering, which starts September 25th that week, which is on pre-sale till tomorrow night, which means you can get a discount on it. And if you wait until a few weeks from now, you can still sign up for it then, but you will just get it at the regular price. It is right now on pre-sale till tomorrow night. But this course is for somebody who wants to monetize and grow a successful podcast. So whether you have a podcast and you're like, I need to put life into this and I need to monetize this and I need to grow my audience and engage my audience, this would be for you. If this is the person who's like, I have nothing and I want to start a podcast and I want to monetize it and grow my audience, this is for you. That's the answer. And by the way, if you are an alumni of my programs, you should DM me because you get an even extra special, um, more of a discount and I'll give you the code. Okay. So, uh, Inner Glow Society, what a cool handle. She said, how do you get a sponsor? Do you reach out or do they find you? So they reach out to me. Okay, that's the truth. The very first episode we ever did, you could go scroll all the way back. We had a sponsor. It was Blue Apron. That was our first sponsor. I should give them a big shout out for that. Um, and they reach out to us. I will say though, that now this is also a little bit of magic. Let me tell you a little bit of magic. So far today, the conversation we've had, which has been really good, I thank you for your questions and your interaction because that's what actually, it's a, it's a feed. I feed on your, your feed, so it's a two-way street. I just want to thank you for that because it's allowing a lot of good stuff to come through. Um, we've been talking a lot about the three-dimensional aspects, right, of what creates a great podcast, which is fun, and I like talking about this stuff, and we talk about this a lot in the class. 
Then there's also, of course, the spiritual layer, right? Like when you are aligned with something, you just bump right into a million amazing opportunities because you're in receptive mode. You are open to it. And really, if you want to know why you don't have an audience or why you don't have the monetization going, there's some level, whether you're conscious or mostly unconscious of it, where you're resistant to it, where you don't really feel that is who you are, that you have to earn it, that it's outside of you, that there's you know, reasons why you're not worthy of it when all of that is garbage. Like none of that is true, right? We are all part of one ocean. So we're all worthy of being in this ocean. We're all connected to God. We're all connected to the stream. We're all connected to the infinite. We already are it. And when you are it, it just finds you because it's a match. So so much of what I now teach is not just what I've learned from doing things, but also from being things. And so that has a lot to do with why I think the courses I teach are so valuable and why people are having such life-changing um, experiences because you just get right back in the stream of your life. You just get right back into the stream of abundance because when you're with someone who's in that stream, you you your own Wi-Fi turns on, right? So um, let's see. When you first considered the podcast, were you at all concerned about running out of content? Yeah, it's interesting. I did think that thought. Oh, sorry. Why did I just take that off? I did think that thought at one point. I'm going to put your question back up. Um, I remember thinking that thought totally. Like, how will I just do this forever? Like, am I going to stop after 20 episodes? And I was like, no, I'm just going to do a podcast. Like, this is it. Meaning I'm doing this. And by the way, I remember when Jenna Fisher was on my show and as a call back to The Office, she played Pam on The Office and she said a lot of her actor friends would come out to LA and they'd say things like, I'm going to give it six months. And then they would be the ones that nothing worked out for because they like already had scarcity. Like, I'm going to give it six months. It's like, huh? And so she said, I didn't say that. I was like, I am an actor. Like, I am here in LA. I moved out here from St. Louis, period. And I am an actor. This is what I do. Like... Can you imagine if you looked at anything like that, if you approach your marriage like that, like I'll give it six months, it's like, you may as well not. It's not gonna work. You have to be committed, right? It's like, I'm gonna be an attorney, I'll give it six months. Like you just went to law school. What do you mean you're gonna give it six months? It's hard, it can be hard in the beginning. You gotta just do it. You gotta push through those first three years at the firm. It ain't easy, right? Like you just do, you just commit. So I was committed, like I'm doing a podcast. There was never a any moment where I told people I'm trying to start a podcast, you don't try, you just do it. I was like, I'm doing a podcast. So I did have that thought, like, what if I run out of what to say? And then I remembered, but it's always the most simple things that are the most fascinating, right? Like, why are there so many movies and songs about love? Because that's the most difficult mystery in the world. And we can never learn it enough, right? Why are there so many questions about God and the universe? Because that's all really anyone wants. We all just want to be close to God. We all want that oneness of being connected to the infinite. And we're always looking for it. So I didn't run out of content because I realized it's always the same questions. My podcast is always the same questions. It's how do I find a way to be connected? How do I find purpose? How do I find fulfillment? How do I find success? What, what's in the way of that? How do I drop it? And then I was like, I can just have that conversation with anyone till the day Timbuktu freezes over because that's all people want to hear, right? Okay. Any more questions? Last question. It's on here. How did you distribute your first podcast? YouTube? Oh my God. My YouTube is a joke. I will do literally, this is not even fiction. I'll sit down with Matthew McConaughey, which I did, which was just such a delight. And then we'll post that podcast video. So you see me and him and he looks so hot. And I myself, frankly, I pulled it together. I looked really cute in my little frame. I had this frame denim shirt on. Not bad. Not wanting to be too much, but just, you know, hair was done. He was so sexy and hot. We took the video of that and put it on YouTube. It has like four people saw it. No, I think it has like a few thousand views. The The audio of the podcast, we get about a million downloads a month. So people heard the podcast. So no, 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 no. You don't need to worry about 17 platforms. I just do the podcast. I don't worry about YouTube. I We put it up there, but I never even mention it. I mean, have I even mentioned it once? It's not in my link in bio. I don't talk about it on the show. I just put it up there in case people happen to find it. I don't know. I, I, I'm i not good at being the girl who's super organized and into all the things. You know why? Because thoughts become things. And my thought is, 
I don't want it to be that complicated. I just want to do one thing. I want to do the podcast. Joe Rogan does a podcast. That's it. You know what I mean? I just want to do a podcast. So the podcast is where it's at. And again, when you say distribute, you can literally go to the homepage if you're on a desktop of Apple Podcasts and you can find a way to upload your own podcast. Now, what people do is they'll put it on there and then they're like, but I put it up there. I'm like, right. But if you build it, they will not come because they don't know it's there. And so what has to happen is you create a podcast and this is what we teach you in the class. We teach you how to create a trailer first and then you put the trailer up and you start to get people in, in invested, engaged. When I say people invested, engaged, it could be your 10 closest friends. That's all I need from you. I need you to get your 10 closest friends excited and engaged, but that's got to happen before you even put episode one up. So we get the trailer up, we get people to subscribe, we get people to like it, we start developing a conversation around the podcast so that when the podcast goes live, we've got 10, 20 people who are going to listen, who already left reviews on just the trailer that's been posted, right? Then episode one comes out and we get our audience involved. And so what do we do? We do a second episode every week where we read the emails from the listeners that came on. And then you know what they do? They listen to the second episode to hear their letter read. And they tell their four friends, oh, listen to this podcast. She read my letter. And there's so many fun, simple things you can do to start. Like you make cotton candy, you just start stirring it. One of the best ways to get your podcast out there is to have other people who have podcasts on your podcast and for you to go on other people's podcasts who have a podcast. Why? Because it shows in the data that people who listen to podcasts listen to podcasts with an S. So if they already listen to a podcast, they're more likely to listen to about seven podcasts a week. That's the average. That's insane. That means they're podcast junkies. It's like readers. People who are readers say, what are you reading? What are you reading? So if you go on somebody's podcast, and even if they only have an audience of about a thousand people, and they only have 400 followers on their social media, but they have a consistent audience of 98 people a week, and you go in front of those 98 people, those 98 people are going to click subscribe to your show. That's the best way for you to start building an audience. And how do you do that? You reach out and there are certain ways that you reach out to certain people, which makes it value add for them. And the other thing I like to do to make it triple whammy value add is say, do the podcast as an Instagram live and then download the audio and upload that. Why? Now you just got an audience because you did it live on each other's feeds. So 14 people listened on your side, 16 people came from her side. Now you've got 30 or so people. Those people just heard it. And then you incentivize people to be a part of the conversation and you ask them questions and you incorporate their questions. It's like the easiest, funnest thing. It's like hosting a dinner party and you want people engaged. So you say, Susan, did you know Marie? She has a daughter at your kid's school. Like you put things together, like naturally what people normally do with their podcasts is they freeze up. They forget how to make this an interactive exchange. So they just would be the person who throws a party but doesn't tell anyone to come. And then people come to the party and they don't interact or ask anyone a question or offer someone a drink. Like there's such basic things that start making your podcast come to life. You can also do your podcast live, right? We're now coming into a different form of COVID uh, protocols. You can record it live in front of the 20 people locally in your in a coffee shop and that starts to get buzz. And then you use that audio and now you have an audience that came to a live experience because people desperately want a live experience now. I mean, I have no shortage of ideas because I've just been at this for five years and that's how we've grown to 40 million downloads. And again, if you are really clear of how much expansion exists in this thing called this infinite gorgeous field, it's incredible, right? Start looking for the evidence by the end of today that there are three women, just three. Find 16 if you want, because you could, but see if you could find an example of three women who have integrity, who have big hearts, who make a really beautiful podcast and look as though they're living an abundant life. You'll find it. So now you see evidence of that and you say, well, hang on a second. There's evidence that this is happening. So why can't that happen to you? Well, you're not a vibrational match in this moment because there's some thought in your mind like it's not possible, forget it, or I'm not good enough, or I don't really want to be seen, so I'll put out a podcast. Maybe I've even done 14 episodes, but no one's really listening. Why? I don't really feel worthy of people 
listening to me or taking people's time. It's amazing how we sabotage and sabotage and sabotage. And so a little bit of what we talk about, I would say the podcast course is the most concrete program that I offer, but a little bit of it is going to be what are you doing that's putting you in the way of the success and how could we unwind that so you could let yourself experience the success and it's amazing how your thought can be felt when you go live your thought can be felt when people are listening because you can hear it in someone's voice so there's so much to say and i loved this chat i'm definitely going to leave it in the feed yes i'm going to save it And if you want to have this conversation for eight weeks, if you want to learn how to start an amazing podcast or grow an incredible audience or monetize the shit out of your podcast and know how I made multi millions of dollars a year with this show, you should take this class. You should sign up in one second and sign your best friend up and you should both start a podcast together. Go to kathyheller.com slash join. If you sign up by tomorrow, it's $500 off right now. We will launch it again right before the class starts in a couple of weeks, and that will be the regular price. If you're an alumni of any of my programs, DM me for a special code because you get even more discount. And I loved this conversation. I love being able to talk about podcasting and the concrete parts and also the immaterial parts. Thank you for such great questions and all your sweet comments. I see all your sweet comments. They're like, so good. Thank you. This was amazing. Don't think I don't see it. I appreciate you so much. I'm now going to go take my daughter to her meet and greet for her first day of kindergarten. And this was a pleasure. Start your podcast, grow your podcast, work from your pajamas, make millions of dollars and have your daughter see you doing that. That's an option. KathyHeller.com slash join. Go get it.